After serving a combined 60 years in prison for crimes they did not commit, three exonerated Texans joined forces to form the unlikeliest of detective agencies. Their mission? To help wrongfully convicted prisoners obtain freedom, just as they did. True Conviction, an extraordinary new independent lens documentary, captures the palpable love shared by this unusual band of brothers as they tirelessly work to find justice for men who found none in the justice system. Here's a preview. My name is Christopher Scott. I went to prison for a crime I didn't commit. I was wrongly convicted, and I need help. Something smells about this case. The evidence was very confusing. We're not going to give up. In prison, hope is the only thing that's keeping them alive in there. True Conviction, part of Independent Lens on PBS. And the film's director, Jamie Meltzer, joins us now. Jamie, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Jamie, the first question, I mean, these three men who spent so many years of their lives in prison, how did it happen? How did they come together to form this odd detective agency? Well, at the time that I first started filming with them, that was 2012, uh, there was already a group of, let's say, 30, I think a little bit more than 30 exonerees in Dallas County. And that's because Dallas started testing the DNA. Mm. So these guys started getting out, and then they would kind of support and be there at the courtroom when the next person came out. And in fact, they would usually have this ritual of giving each other, giving the person coming out a $100 bill just so they had something that first day. So by the time Christopher Scott, who's the lead investigator in the film, gets out, there were already, you know, uh, maybe 20 guys that had already you know, been out, knew what it was like to transition as someone who's been exonerated, and they helped one another. Now, you know, th these guys had no experience investigating, no. of course, none at all. And as we see in the film, it's, n it's not an easy job. Yeah. Um, how did they pick it up so quickly? Well, they say, you know, who better than them, people who have experienced it, have yes. been through it, to, to kind of look at cases and see the patterns that they see in their own cases. And that's really what they're looking for, this sort of mirror, a reflection of their own experience, where the justice system got it wrong with them. And when they see that in another case, in another person pleading their case in prison, that's the kind of case that they take So on. they have a unique BS detector, right? They can they tell do, yeah. pretty, pretty quickly yeah. if somebody's telling them the truth and somebody's not. Yeah. And at the, and you see that same, in the film. You see it in the film. I mean, they're they're tough, and they they sort of play good cop, bad cop, mm. or good investigator, bad investigator, where they kind of switch off roles when they're interviewing someone. But they're also willing to listen to people because they weren't listened to when they were in prison. And the film focuses uh, on the team's efforts to exonerate two particular men. Yeah. Max, so far, yeah. he was a death row inmate of uh, 35 years at the yeah. time when right. they got together with the detectives. And Isaiah Hill, who served almost 40 years, yeah. who was serving 40 years of a life sentence for a $150 robbery. Yeah. Right? What captivated, what made them go for these cases? Well, they took on a lot more cases, and we followed several more cases as filmmakers, but okay, what the captivated them about these cases and, and me as the filmmaker was that, that, well, first of all, Isaiah Hill, who spent the 40 years in prison for a $150 robbery with a knife. Nobody was hurt, but there was a knife. Uh, he, you immediate, your heart goes out to him immediately. Like he's a broken man. You want to help him, and I think that's what attracted Chris to helping Isaiah Hill. For us, the case kind of showed um, a certain side of where the criminal justice system can get it wrong. Um, a lot of times, wrongful convictions come about because of false identification. Um, and the, with Max Sofar's case, he was the longest-serving uh, prisoner on Texas death row, I believe. Um, and his case shows how false confessions can contribute to a wrongful conviction. He falsely confessed. He recanted it afterwards. But, but they had the confession, and that was enough to convince a jury. And honestly, I mean, I have not, I can't remember seeing a film mm. more damning of the, mm. of the so-called justice system mm. than this film. Because what it shows in a way I have not seen before is the fact that the authorities really don't seem to care at all right. if they have the, the right person. Is this something that happens in Texas and not in the rest of the country, or, or is this you see that everywhere? I think it's everywhere. I mean, I'm not an expert on wrongful convictions, but they I know they happen everywhere. And I think the, really the only reason that 
this film focuses on Dallas County is that Dallas County started what they call a conviction integrity unit in the DA's office. Then the, it was the first one to do that. And then they looked into cases. They, they test DNA. They looked into cases that didn't have DNA. And they end up with these 30, 30 to 40 cases now that have been overturned. Now, not every city has done that, you know, and certain cities like Houston and Texas threw out the DNA evidence. It can't be tested. Wow. Those people, and you'd have to assume there may be 30 or 40 people at least, just like there are in Dallas, um, you know, will never get out of prison. Well, today. Jamie, congratulations on this film. It's really powerful, and it's also unbelievably riveting. It's Thank hard who who done it, and it's a moving film. Thanks so much for making it. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, the Independent Lens documentary True Conviction premieres on PBS on April 30th at 10 p.m. Please check your local listings for additional airtimes.